Hey guys, it's Christina Selena reporting from two parts of the world. And today we're going to talk about women in architecture. Okay, so this is a really important topic for us because we really feel like it needs to be, it is being spoken about, but not enough. Um, so first we're going to kind of look at a little bit of the history of women in architecture, and then we're going to talk about today, like what, what does it look like today, and why is this something that we still need to talk about, and then Christina and I will share some of our personal experiences towards the end, so make sure to stick around and watch the whole video. So the term architect is a pretty new term, um, and throughout history you would call these people master builders. There were more seen as construction people rather than designers because they did both and now that profession has kind of separated where the designers and the construction people, the construction workers are like two different um, professions. So throughout history the building industry as a whole has been a male dominant profession including construction, architecture, engineering, everything. So in my bachelor degree I actually did an art history minor and throughout all of history Basically, all of the architects or master builders or anything like that we've learned about were male. But that's not to say that female master builders or female architects didn't exist during history. Because like anything, any industry, any um, profession that happened throughout history during war, when the men went to war, somebody had to take over. So during that time, it was actually women taking over and becoming architects and becoming master builders and getting these skills. But yet, that's not something we really hear about. There's some buildings in historical France that still exist today, designed by women. There was also specifically, um, I think I'm going to butcher this name, but it's Plautilla. Um, Ricci, she was an architect um, in historical Rome. And there are some churches and palaces that she did in and around Rome. And I feel like that's something that's not really spoken about either. She wasn't like a famous, famous architect. So even today, women like can be really great architects. They don't really get the recognition that they probably deserve because it is such a male dominant industry. I think you can see the Prixer Prize, which is like the biggest prize in architecture. It's an annual um, event and there's a jury and in the end, there's just one winner a year. And the first ever Prixer Prize winner that was a woman was in 2004, which was Zaha Hadid. And she's always been like such a great, great architect. So Zaha was such a big name in architecture and she really deserved that recognition. And it's kind of interesting that throughout my eight and a half years, sad, of architecture school, I've never actually heard um, any professors be like, oh, look at this building she did. Because we always look at references of other architects and I honestly I mean I'm sure it happened before but like honestly all the big names were men so in architecture school um, finding a female architect that's super influential is something that you kind of had to look up yourself or take on that task to learn about them yourselves because I don't remember like ever learning about one do you no I, I guess not <laughs> <laughs> it's not something I really thought about, you know, that it's like, oh, these are all male, like men, yeah. but um, I can't think of one, and, you know, just all the precedents that we've looked at, like, it's all, it's all guys. Um, so, 2013, like, kind of moving along in the history, um, in 2013, there was this huge uh, movement that was happening. There's this architecture firm called Venturi Scott Brown and they're partners in a firm. So Venturi is the guy, Scott Brown is a woman and um, they worked out together on a lot of projects. They're super, super iconic um, as a firm, it's, especially in Philadelphia, we've heard a lot about them, probably more Venturi than Scott Brown. And there was this really controversial issue in 1991 that Venturi won the Prixer Prize without Scott Brown. So on a project that they obviously worked on together because they're partners in the firm, only one of them got the recognition. Like her name is on the firm as well. So it's kind of like, hmm. So I'm going to read this because it's kind of long. Scott Brown said, as a woman, she felt excluded by the elite of architecture throughout her career. 
The Prixer Prize was based on the fallacy that great architecture was the work of a single lone man, genius, at the expense of collaborative work. So she really felt like even though, you know, she worked on this project, she didn't get any recognition for it and she didn't get a prize for it. And if you think, well, Selena, that's 1991, that was a while ago. Well, the same shit happened again in 2012. So that was Lu Wen Yu and her partner Wang Shu um, had a project and only Wang Shu won the Brixer Prize. So this is still something that is definitely happening like within our architecture careers and you know we should it should really not happen anymore like this is like come on what is this um and it like looking forward into the Prixer Prize yes like some more women have won in this you know decade and in 2020 two women have won which is like amazing and it's super like nice that we're taking steps forward and you know, women are being recognized and now, I guess, not really in our generation so much because, you know, um, the 2012 thing happened while we were actually still in architecture school. But, you know, maybe new architecture students, they have some more female architects to look up to and to realize that this doesn't need to be a male dominant profession. And, you know, we can do it. We can be in that construction industry. Like we, we could do everything. We could do anything we put our mind to. So... Yeah, I think we are moving forward, but I don't think we should turn a blind eye to the past. Yeah. In the U.S., the statistics for women in architecture is approximately two out of five. So that's 20 percent, which is still very, very low and is not even close to 50 percent. However, looking at the demographics of 2017 and 2019 on NCARB's website, there is an increase in students. Uh, for female students applying and going to school for architecture. So we have to complete these hours of experience. And they used to be called IVP, but they're now called AXP. And there has been a big increase with that. Although there's less women architects than men, currently women are achieving like the six exams that need to be done 1.2 years faster than men are. Damn. <laughs> I guess it's because we're good at multitasking. <laughs> well, I guess in Europe, the statistics look quite similar. Um, in Germany, um, it's also about 21% are women. Um, architects are women. And in overall in Europe, it's about 30. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some countries such as Greece um, where... It's about 50-50 where it kind of brings up the statistic for all of Europe. And yeah, um, I, it makes me really happy to hear that, you know, women are really motivated and kind of doing the tests faster in the U.S. and that they're not being discouraged um, because honestly, there's been some moments in my career that I guess they weren't that discouraging, but they could have been. But I'm the kind of person that if you're like, oh, you can't do this. I'm like, oh, watch me. Like, <laughs> what? Excuse me. Right. So for me, it's like motivating. But for other people, it could be like a bit like, oh, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we're going to talk about a little bit of our experiences in architecture as a woman. So um, in my first firm... There was um, two partners that were both male. Uh, I started off working for interior design, which was all female. Um, and then I switched over to the architecture department and I worked for, personally, I worked with um, just male, other males. I was also the only female intern there at the time and there weren't that many females, but um, there was talks that there was a senior architect um, that they were going to promote to to partner soon and she was a female and I thought that that was like super inspiring but I actually never got to work with her or for her directly so that was kind of a shame. Um, in my second firm it was the same thing as Christina. Um, there were females in the company, there was you know a female engineer, there was construction managers that were female and then the rest of and then Christina and I of course most important. And um, our Spain branch had some female architects and then the rest of the um, women were in HR or secretary or those kind of positions. And I have to say that every 
man I've worked with or worked for has been super, super respectful. Like if I've directly worked with them, they like, I have somehow proved myself that, you know, I'm capable. Um, but they, they were super, super respectful. I never had any issue. I think the only thing was like somebody joked that I shouldn't show up to like a construction site, site in high heels. I'm like, what? Like, would you show up to a construction site in high heels? Like, no. Okay, then like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a, it was like a joke, but I was like, I don't know. I was just like, excuse me. <laughs> um, well, that was the person I worked with. After that, it, like, it, I don't think it happened again. Um, but something that I did notice is people that I'm not directly working with that I haven't had a chance to prove myself to, which I'm not sure why. Like, it's always like, I feel like a lot of things in life that like, as a woman, you have to prove yourself that you're capable, whereas a man, like, you don't have to. Um, so like, just some examples, I went to a site and the landscape art architect, like, looked me up and down. I was like, what are you, an intern? I was like, whoa, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like I was like in shock and then like a female coworker of mine that um she works in the construction she's a construction manager would like step and was like no she's the designer and I was like <laughs> so I think it's always important to like have you know each other's back because I don't know I didn't expect that from somebody that is like working on a similar like same project you know mm -hmm. and another thing that's like always really really awkward and um is like when the project is rolling as the architect you have to go to the project site and so I don't know I was working on this project and all I needed to do was it was an existing building so I just needed to go take a dimension from like one column to the next just to like double check so we can continue the drawings and I walk on the construction site and people like everybody just stops and stares at me and it's like oh can we help you like what are you doing here and like on my hard hat it says like architecture firm <laughs> I'm like oh like, no, I know what I'm doing. Thank you, though. Like, yeah. and then they're like watching me to make sure like, I don't know, I feel like just they wouldn't do that to a man, right? They wouldn't go up and be like, oh, like, you look lost. Right, right. <laughs> um, so I feel like that's definitely a thing is like on the construction site, like, there's just not any woman, usually, like very, very rarely would you see like a woman on a construction site. So something that kind of breaks my heart a little bit is like women um, tearing other women down. And actually I thought that they were, um, the specific people were being kind of the way they were to Christine and I because we were interns or because we were younger. Um, but then I talked to some of the male intern architects and they straight up were like, nope, they're being sexist. Like they treat us with like the utmost respect. And it was just the problem of like, you know, people are always like, oh, the girls this, the girls that. And it's like, no, we're like women professionals. Like, don't call us girls. And, um, you know, I was going to a job site one time. I had a hard hat and a vest on and all the security gear. And they're like, oh, you look so cute. I'm like, what? I'm sorry. I'm like, that's, yeah. that's not, like, that's not professional at all. And like, I'm just going to do my job. Like, I don't know. It's. It just felt like they were always on us and always calling us girls and we didn't directly work with these I guess they were like the you know secretary HR those kind of um, That kind of position where they're not like they don't know what we do They so they don't think we do much I guess right well I'm pretty sure they think well I'm pretty sure they know that it's not like we're grabbing coffee for people upstairs, you know I'm not like, sure well, I hope that's not what they thought, because why did they think they needed so many of us? I don't know. That's how they treated us. Yeah, that is, that is how they treated us, for sure. All right, so I feel like Christina has, like, a double whammy because she's, like, a woman and a minority, and we're going to do a minority video in the future. So make sure to subscribe to see that one uh, whenever we make it. Um, but what kind of experiences have you had, Christina? So I've had mixed experiences. Um, so for my first firm, which was more of like a part-time, like freelancing thing. So she was, a she is, she's a woman and she's a minority. Like when I first started out and I was just like, you know, my second year of architecture school, like I didn't think much of it. Like I didn't think a woman running a firm was like unique or like rare. Uh, so I actually still look up to her even till today. And she's, she's amazing. So for my second firm, which is 
the same one as Selena, where she already talked about it. There were definitely some, like, like she said, like the people that I worked directly with. Well, except for one that I for for me, except for one, um, like I I do think that everyone was like very respectful and stuff like that, and that like actually for some like I don't even think I had to like prove myself. I think that, like, he had asked once, like, what do you want to be? Like, you want to be an architect, right? So I'm going to treat you like an architect and not like an intern or, you know, whatever. And that was really nice and that was very validating because, like, how, you know, how are you supposed to be shaped to a certain profession if somebody's always treating you like they're, like you're lower than them, you know? Mm. And so... So there was somebody else who I felt like he didn't take my designs seriously. And every time I proposed something, he would just be like, oh, okay, yeah, that could be an option. But then, like, if a male was to propose the same idea, he would be like, that's such a great idea. And I would just, like, I mean, when the other person proposed the idea, like, he was proposing it on my behalf. So me and him mm-hmm. knew that it was my idea. But still, like, I just didn't like that feeling that, like, my ideas were more, like, dismissed or not taken seriously uh, Mm -hmm. compared to a male's idea, which was my idea to begin with. (laughs) Yeah. So I think it really sucks to, like, firsthand see that, like, if a man says your idea, it's approved and, like, great. And if you say it, it's, like, not. And the fact that, like, both of you guys, like, agreed to do this is, like, for him to say it for you is, like, crazy because then he also knows, like, that that's kind of how the world is and it shouldn't be like that like we should be able to be respected for our own ideas for what they stand on their own even if a woman says it and not a man there was actually this one time with another male intern that somebody asked me to show him how I did a rendering for a site plan and I was trying to explain and show him and like all these things and I felt like I pretty much did did it for him and like two hours later or something like that you know the person who he was working under like like wanted to check up to see how he was doing and stuff and they were like wow this looks great did you do this all by yourself and he just looked at me he looked at me then looked back at the person and says yeah I did but like if I remember correctly you had to do like every step for him because he didn't understand it like when you told it to him so he asked you like every few seconds like a question and then you just told him how to do it each step (laughs) yeah like I like did it like I didn't just tell him I showed him how to do it like on his like computer because like there was just no other way for me to like explain it um and he took my credit for it and I just looked at him like okay we're gonna do that now (laughs) Um, yeah, so actually, but there was, you know, there were definitely also like good things at that firm as well. Mm. At my most recent firm, it is a global company. However, in the Philadelphia office, there is a big majority of women. Like I would say that there's 50 to 60 percent and which was really empowering. Like I felt like all women who were there were very strong minded and they spoke what they wanted to like. They they spoke what they thought without hesitation. Mm. And it felt really nice that, you know, they didn't need to be validated or like, or anything like that. And people took them seriously and, you know, respected that they are in the job title or position that they are in because they are fully capable. Uh, And actually, there was this one time where, so I guess in the past, like, this is kind of like a, like a women health thing I guess that's like an ongoing like how do you really approach this in a workplace but in previous companies where let's say I would have like cramps like where uh like I'm like really in pain and I want to go home like the first question I'm asked is like like first of all I'm not taken seriously and then second it's like okay so you're gonna come in tomorrow right However, if you were to tell that person that you had, like, the flu or, like, a migraine, the first thing that they ask you wouldn't be, like, are you coming in tomorrow? Mm -hmm. It would be, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Or, like, you should take care of yourself, you know? And, like, let us know how you feel tomorrow. Um, So 
this happened like a few months ago where I just felt really poorly and I was I was helping somebody with some plans and I had asked her like can I go home because I wasn't feeling well and she looked me in the eyes and told me to take five steps back and start the whole conversation again because it's not can I it's I am like I am not feeling well so I will go home and I just froze like I I've never like experienced that before like it should be my health before anything else like I shouldn't be intimidated to like let somebody know that I'm not feeling well you know because I would say that like when you're dying of cramps it's like the same it's the same immobility to work as if you had a migraine or as if you had a flu or Mm -hmm. you know or any other sickness yeah and and so I thought that that was like really really nice that that had happened yeah and I think that that gave me like a lot of like confidence you know to like speak more about like like or let people know like I'm not feeling well like I'm gonna go home Mm -hmm. and I don't have to justify why I'm not feeling well So if you've had any experiences about being a woman in a male-dominant business, whether it's architecture or something else, please comment below and let us know um, about your experiences. Stay tuned for our future video on minorities in architecture. And if you like this video, please hit like and hit subscribe. Until next time, bye.